Hello everybody and welcome to WASD20. My name is Nate and today I am very excited to be sharing with you three books about Dungeons and Dragons. Something a little different. Normally I talk about a lot of D&D books, but these are books about Dungeons and Dragons and uh, I think you're really going to like them. I think you should read them. So let's talk about them. First off, we'll be spending a couple minutes looking at Of Dice and Men, the story of Dungeons and Dragons and the people who play it by David M. E. Walt, level 15 cleric. This was the first of the three that I read, and absolutely love it. Next up, we're going to be looking at Empire of Imagination, Gary Gygax, and the Birth of Dungeons and Dragons by Michael Whitwer. This is like the ultimate biography of Gary Gygax, and it does some really interesting things that I think you would like. Lastly, we have Playing at the World, a history of simulating wars, people, and fantastic adventures from Chess to Role-Playing Games by John Peterson. This book, it ain't small. We'll take a look. <laughs> One of the reasons I'm showing you these books is because I'm going to be doing a series on the history of Dungeons and & Dragons, and these are three books that I've been using for research. And as I'm reading them, I'm thinking, people really got to read these books. So anyway, let's get down to it. Let's take a closer look at the books and check them out. So uh, we're going to start with Of Dice and Men. This is the first of the three books that I read. I read it about, oh, probably a year and a half ago, two years ago, and really, really enjoyed it. This was when I was fairly new to Dungeons and Dragons, fairly new to role-playing games, uh, probably about six months into the hobby. I picked up this book and just devoured it. And I would say this book is a bit of a love letter to role-playing games. Uh, it speaks to the power of the medium it's really a good book for anyone, from the crusty RPG veteran to the complete outsider who has no idea what Dungeons & Dragons is all about. Uh, it'd probably be a good book for you gamers out there, but also, if you're looking to share a bit of what you do and why you're into this hobby with uh, a, a relative or a close friend, uh, this might be a good book to recommend for them or to buy them, uh, just to give them a glimpse into this hobby and show them what what makes it so amazing uh, but if we open it up here I'll give you a look at a few different things that it does here he talks about the difficulty of writing for a D&D uh, &D hardcore audience and uh, outsiders um, so there will be some things in here that if you are a veteran to role-playing games you'll go yeah 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 I get it but I think for the most part you'll still really enjoy the book and it's got lots of new stuff that I think anyone can learn from and just uh, is really well written. So basically in this book there are three types of writing. First in the uh, first section there's just kind of intro about what tabletop role-playing games are uh, and just a really good description uh, for newcomers mainly but you know I think anyone can get something out of it. It also has throughout the book then a lot of history how role-playing games came to be starting way back in some of the earliest games humans ever played uh, to war games of the 19th and 20th century, which became kind of the basis for tabletop role-playing games. Talks about Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson, goes into uh, detail in, about their lives and who they were, and some of the other movers and shakers in the world of tabletop role-playing games and Dungeons and & Dragons. So yeah, it has a really good history, and it takes it pretty current. It goes all the way up, you know, the, the last couple chapters kind of talks about the different editions of Dungeons & Dragons, uh, talks briefly about Pathfinder and some of the other variations, and it even gets into a, um, a little bit of 5th edition uh, when it was still being playtested. The author talks about his experience being playtested and why he was excited about the new edition. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the other thing that it does, if I can find a good example here, here we go, I bookmarked one, is he has these little stories interspersed throughout the book, uh, they're in italics here, uh, about his Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Uh, he is a player in a campaign and he's writing about his party's adventures, his group's adventures, uh, basically in novel form. So just kind of telling the story. So here's an example. Uh, when morning came, we hid and watched as Ganubia approached the city gates. We sent him alone, wearing the protective magic amulet, because he's the most diplomatic and charming member of our group. If the creatures in the city were friendly, he'd be the best person to make contact. If they weren't, 
he's light on his feet and could run like hell. So you get the idea here. Uh, he's telling a story. There's there's combat. There's um, you know just kind of telling the story of a world. <clears throat> it's a really interesting and unique um, story too because it's it's more of a modern setting, kind of a dystopian future in which vampires are actually ruling the world. So I thought all that was kind of cool because it's just an interesting twist on the traditional kind of medieval fantasy uh, role-playing game. You know, he talks about visiting San Francisco and other places with his, his party or uh, Japan. And yeah, it's just really cool. So uh, I liked that aspect of it too. <clears throat> just trying to show here's the, here's the real storytelling power of tabletop role-playing games. So that is Of Dice and Men. Really good book. Again, it's got a lot of history, a lot of personal stuff about the uh, influence of tabletop role-playing games in his life, the author. And um, yeah, just some really good information for anyone from the veteran to the newcomer. Next up, let's talk about Empire of Imagination. Empire of Imagination came out less than a year ago now, I think. And um, it's a really great book. It is basically the ultimate biography of Gary Gygax, which I think was desperately needed. We don't really have anything like that. And it's coming from the perspective of someone who plays Dungeons and Dragons, uh, but also he remains pretty objective, I think, and um, is not, does not gloss over things uh, in terms of Gary Gygax's downfalls too. But first of all, let's talk about this cover. This cover is amazing because it's basically the cover of Unearthed Arcana. Instead of a wizard, however, you have Gary Gygax sitting here. Uh, here you have it, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, Unearthed Arcana from 1985. Uh, so that cover right there, again, uh, just a beautiful recreation of that cover with Gary Gygax there. With all the stuff of his life, all the stuff that's kind of mentioned in the, in the book, how he drank beer and buttermilk and loved chess and his typewriter, of course. So, yeah, really cool cover. Love it. And then also the inside cover. Really great job here because this is a map of Lake Geneva, the city where Gary Gygax lived, where TSR was founded. The map is drawn by Stephen Sullivan, who's one of the original artists who worked on maps like this for early Dungeons & Dragons modules in the 1980s. So that is just awesome. I love that. Uh, it's got that, you know, original D&D module feel with the, uh, the blue ink. And, yeah, just super cool. So, great job on the cover art and the inside cover art. Very cool. So, I mentioned before, this is the ultimate biography of Gary Gygax. It is extremely well-researched. Uh, it's clear that the author conducted a lot of interviews and includes a lot of primary sources uh, to learn more about Gary Gygax. One of the things that I really loved about it is it reads like a novel. It's, this is a true page turner. And I would say that Of Dice and Men is too. I had a hard time putting either of these books down. They were so good. But in telling the story of a storyteller, uh, the author, Michael Whitwer, tries to get into the head of Gary Gygax a little bit and tries to put us there. Uh, reading about him as almost an, an omniscient, an all-knowing author. Uh, who is telling a story. So this is what I'm talking about. Young Gary lay crookedly on the bottom bunk of his bed, reading a brightly colored pulp magazine. He wore army fatigues from head to toe, which his parents foolishly thought were just for play, along with his leather hiking boots. He knew he wasn't supposed to wear his boots on the bed, or even in the house, but his parents weren't home. So you get the idea there. We can go back a little further here. Here's another one. It was a bleak and blustery October evening as a graying, portly man hastily exited a lighted industrial office building in Lake Geneva. He stood motionless for several moments, his bearded face expressionless, his steely brown eyes glazed through his thick horn-rimmed glasses. How could I let this happen, he thought. He wanted to shout at the top of his lungs, but he couldn't seem to move at present. He felt numb, empty, and entirely speechless. So, yeah, this is the, <laughs> it opens with a bang here. This is page two. It's telling the story of Gary Gygax losing his company, essentially, uh, his baby. And um, starts off just kind of getting you wondering, how could this have happened, this mighty empire he built coming, crumbling to the ground? So, yeah, that was a really cool aspect of it. It's not all written in that way, uh, but a lot of it is. And there's also some little bits of uh, kind of DM. Here's level six. 
um, you know, DM and player scenes. Sir E. Gary, I think we're talking about Ernest Gary Gygax, of course, E. Gary. And um, some little kind of adventures that maybe give a little foreshadowing of what's to come. And uh, yeah, so those were kind of interesting. I didn't get them at first, but then it uh, started sinking in like, oh, okay, I think I'm getting it. I thought they were pretty well done, but they were a little confusing for me at first. The story of Gary Gygax's life is uh, one that's full of drama, you know, humble beginnings to riches and excess, and then it all comes crumbling down. So I think a lot of good life lessons. Uh, again, the author is not glossing over some of his weaknesses as a father or as a businessman but you know they he kind of tackles those head on and in the end you come away with the feeling that this was an amazing man who did something that really fundamentally affected our culture and still affects us today in the way games are played in all sorts of popular media i think you see and the author makes a good case that gary gygax's legacy is a powerful one even in today's culture. So yeah, really good book. I would say that definitely someone who's not into Dungeons and Dragons could still very much enjoy this book, uh, but it doesn't have maybe as good an intro. It is not the same kind of love letter to uh, tabletop role-playing games that of Dyson Men is. Still very, very good. And uh, if you're into Dungeons and Dragons and wanting to know more about where it came from, this is a great book. All right, lastly, let's take a look at Playing at the World by John Peterson, a history of simulating wars, people, and fantastic adventures from chess to role-playing games. So this one is the ultimate textbook on the history of role-playing games. This thing is thick, and I will caution you by saying it is not light reading. Now, that's not to say it's not enjoyable. I think a lot of people clearly enjoy this book a whole lot. But personally, I actually had a hard time getting through it. And it's the reason that I still haven't finished reading it. I've read bits and pieces, and uh, honestly, probably you know less than half of it overall. And I don't intend to sit down and finish it anytime soon. It's a book that I'm glad I have. But anyway, let's get into it and talk about what the book is. Of the about 700 pages, 650 pages in this book, uh, the first 80 or so kind of tell the story of uh, what happened in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin and Illinois kind of leading up to the birth of Dungeons and Dragons from war games in the Midwest to starting the new thing, Dungeons and Dragons. And from there, it goes in a less chronological fashion and it talks about, for example, chapter two, setting the medieval fantasy genre. So you get that. Uh, and then chapter three, the system, rules of the game. So it talks about game rules. And then uh, chapter four, characters, role and immersion. So you get a little bit about you know actual role playing. And here's role playing in reality. You get the idea. So yeah, that was an interesting take. And I, I think that it's not a bad take at all. It's not a bad way to organize uh, thoughts rather than just going in chronological order. Let's break down the various aspects of tabletop role playing games and talk about how they developed and where else we see them. But this book, again, it's, it's pretty dense reading. Uh, it is very academic. There are lots and lots of footnotes. You can see here, you know, lots of footnotes on every page. Um, and lots of really cool primary documents that he included here. John Peterson has clearly gone out of his way to do tons and tons of research. Look at this. Gygax's Gen Con 1 floor plan, the Lake Geneva Horticultural Hall, right? <laughs> There's the floor plan. Uh, really cool. Here on page 497, you have the original royalty agreement between Gygax and Arneson. So agreeing on the royalties, and that would become a, a matter of, well, controversy later on. <laughs> you know, in terms of just the level of detail he goes into, there are pages and pages of early role-playing, or early war games, rather, uh, and really cool pictures, too. Uh, and you can see, you know, here's Ricewitz, father and son, uh, these early game designers, 1811 to 1824, a war game map, uh, all kinds of stuff here. Early Kriegspiel pieces, Kriegspiel is an early war game. Um, and yeah, just exceptionally detailed. And uh, you know, it's at times probably more detailed than I'm looking for. And that's why I really like the other books a bit better, I think. However, I think those other books 
would not have been as good if it weren't for this book because they both credit John Peterson for doing a lot of the legwork in terms of the history of role-playing games. Page 172, here you have clerics. You can learn all about the origin of clerics in the medieval fantasy genre. And uh, so here you got like, you know, five, six pages, seven pages on clerics and uh, where do they come from and, and where, do we, where do we see uh, the origins of this, what it would then become a class in the medieval fantasy genre. So, yeah, it is really well written. And when I say it's dense and academic, I don't mean that his style is hard to read. I think he has, he does have a playful style. Um, he gets a bit wordy at times, but uh, I think that he, it's clear that he genuinely enjoys the topic and has a great passion for it. And that, that comes out in this book from what I've read so far. So, I do recommend it, but know what you're getting into. It is not a light read. Alright, so there you have it. Three books about Dungeons & Dragons and about the history of tabletop role-playing games. Three books I've really enjoyed, and I think you will too. So I recommend you check them out. Don't forget to check out the description below for the links to the Amazon products. And if you've read some of these books, I would also love to hear what you think. What did you like? What did you not like so much? Uh, if you have any questions about them, just put them down below in the comments. If you like this one, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed for more great future content. And everybody take care. You'll see me again very soon.